In state of addiction coverage, an upstate woman wants South Carolina to address the growing fentanyl problem after her son died after taking the drug. Our Erin Baker spoke with her tonight and is sharing her story. Erin. Nigel and Carol Jada Smith lost her son to fentanyl in 2020. She wants state laws to change and wants people to learn more about the deadly drug. I'm here picking out a casket for my kid for a drug I know nothing about. A terrible nightmare that became a reality for Jada Smith. She lost her son in 2020, a life cut short because of fentanyl. Fentanyl is, wow, a powerful drug. It don't discriminate. It impacts people across gender, age, education, and county lines in South Carolina. This is a boy, graduated high school, welding degree, great job, own home, money in the bank. It's a growing problem. In a 2020 report, DHEC said the drug was responsible for 1,100 overdose deaths. And now we're in 2023 and it's getting understood. People's hearing about it. People's talking about it. State lawmakers are talking about it as well. There are two bills that are going through the state house right now. Senate Bill 1, which would allow law enforcement to charge someone who deals fentanyl that results in a deadly overdose with homicide punishable by up to 30 years in prison. There's also Senate Bill 153, which would make trafficking fentanyl a crime like other hard drugs. You have like cocaine and heroin, which we know kills people. You have a bill for these two. You should have a bill for this one. Jada says she's reached out to over 50 leaders at all levels of government in South Carolina. Law enforcement, local mayors, state legislators, even Governor McMaster. And then I started writing and emailing the governor. Anybody for South Carolina that could help to make a bill for fentanyl. As the fentanyl conversation grows across the country, Jada hopes more people will pay attention. It should be talked about at the dinner table, in the living room, family meetings. I think this one's worth doing your research over. And make an effort to learn more about it now. When it affects you, you understand it, but by then it's too late. Both of those bills, Senate Bill 1 and Senate Bill 153, are currently in committee waiting for full Senate approval. That's followed by approval from the House and then a signature from the governor. Nigel.